Hey guys, welcome to my channel. Before we get into today's video, I wanted to take just a quick second to share with you my top three Maligator Mom must-haves. First on my list is Tactipup.com. Now these are the collars that you see my dogs wearing in all my videos, and I personally prefer the two inch width. You can get them with their name embroidered on them, and I always have them add a handle. These collars are made with a cobra buckle and all metal hardware. They are incredibly durable and they are made right here in the USA. So if you're interested, check out tactipup.com and use my code MALLIGATORMOM to save 10%. And number two, everybody wants to know, what do you feed your dogs? Well, this is it. I feed my dogs Munster Milling. Now this is a customizable kibble, so you can actually go onto their website and select additives that they will mix fresh into your bag. It's absolutely phenomenal. I add things like bacon fat, salmon oil, probiotic, and freeze-dried elk. If you're interested, use my code MALLIGATORMOM and you will save 55% off your first custom bag. And number three, if you are interested in online dog training videos, you definitely need to check out robertcabral.com. I have consumed a lot of online dog training videos and Robert is by far the best. Head over to robertcabral.com, use code MALLIGATORMOM. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. It's me, Maligator Mom, and today I actually plan to film this entire video here inside my home. So we see a lot of videos out there around the Belgian Malinois where training is taking place outside for the most part, right? These videos are all dogs on the field. Even I myself post a lot of my dog videos from working with my dogs in the garage uh, or out in the yard, that kind of thing. And that's fine, that's great, but we cannot ignore that they're actually spending most of their time here inside the house. So how do we find success here, inside, when it matters, when people knock on the door, or when you're on the phone, or when your child needs something, or whatever, right? Like, like daily life, like, like what are some tips to help you be successful with your Malinois inside? Because let's face it, Malinois can be a bit of a challenge. You know, we know they're a very high energy dog. So today I'm gonna film inside and give you guys kind of some tips and pra best practices for what it is that you can do to coexist with your Malinois peacefully inside the home. Uh, what does that look like for me? What does that look like for you? We're gonna find out today. So how do we find success with our Belgian Malinois in a home environment? There are several things that I think contribute to my success here inside the home, and I wanna break down what those are for you right now. So number one is that I provide my dogs with genetic fulfillment. And if you don't understand what genetic fulfillment is, you've probably gotten in a little too deep with the Belgian Malinois, and you need to take a big step back, hire a professional trainer, and understand how to do that. Genetic fulfillment is things like giving my dog an outlet for his bred innate genetic desire to bite shit. This is a dog who is bred to bite. So if you are not providing an outlet, you are not genetically fulfilling that dog, then you are likely going to struggle with his behavior for his entire life. So, you know, these dogs are bred with bite drive, they're bred for you know, they're bred with high toy drive or prey drive, and all of those things have to have an outlet, or you are gonna have a very naughty, misbehaved, unfulfilled, frustrated dog on your hands. So be prepared to offer genetic fulfillment. Number two is that I work on a lot of impulse control, but this is tricky because depending on the dog, this requires some balance because impulse control can actually kind of tank a dog's drive. So you have to be kind of careful and find some balance there. And that can be a little tricky depending on your dog. So impulse control is things like when I don't let my dogs crowd me at the door and just rush out the front door when I open it. That's impulse control. 
Um, I do not allow them to cross the barrier into my bedroom. I don't allow them to come in there unless they've been invited. Not rushing out of the crate or the kennel door when I open it. Just because I open the kennel or the crate door does not signal to them that it's okay for them to just explode out of their crate or kennel. They have to have some patience there at those thresholds. And I have a couple little boundaries set up around my home. My dogs are not allowed to just follow me into the bedroom. So that's a threshold where, you know, I don't allow them to cross without being invited. And so a lot of these little rules kind of exist throughout my home. And of course, those things require maintenance and you have to work on those things. And Malinois can be kind of, you know, little assholes and they'll push, they'll push your buttons and they'll test your limits and, um, you know, it just, it is what it is. There is a level of management that is required with a Belgian Malinois, but impulse control is definitely a big part of that. I know a lot of people complain, you know, uh, I can't have people over to my house because if I knock on the door and let a guest in, my dogs rush this person and jump all over them and it's really terrible and inappropriate. Um, and you're right, it is. So you need to give them some direction in the home. And a lot of that has to do with impulse control. And so I'm going to show you um, some tricks there. And the other thing is utilize the crate. Crate your fucking dogs. Like I'm so sick of having to repeat myself when it comes to this, but people aren't getting it. I mean, I'm constantly messaged. People send me pictures of chewed up dining room chairs and all, you know, like just a nightmare of a dog and they won't crate their dog. They think that crate training is mean to the dog or cruel or the dog will be sad or the dog cries when I put him in his crate. Like you've got to get over this issue. If you, if you are someone who feels guilty putting your dog in a crate, I get it, I do. I, I struggled with that myself with my first puppy and the puppy's crying and you feel guilty, you know, I get it. But at the same time, get over it. Like this is, this is your, signal to like let it go get over it put your dog in a crate your dog needs to have a designated place in the house where they can go where it can be quiet where they know that they have to go in there and lay down and be quiet and that takes training you can't just throw a dog in a crate and expect for him to you know if he's had no exposure to to a crate before yeah he's going to scream his head off for a few days you're just going to have to deal with it for a few days until he shuts up throw a blanket over it, whatever you got to do, um, you know, put him in a back bedroom so you don't have to hear it and, and turn on some music in there for him or something, right? But you've got to get your dog crate trained. It is vital when it comes to a happy coexistence inside the home with a Belgian Malinois. No way around it. So here's a great example. Storm is just over here laying down. She's not bothering anybody or anything, but I'm going to ask her to go into her crate and she's going to do that without fussing or crying or throwing a fit at all. And I want to show you guys what that looks like. Storm, come on. Crate. Look at that. Fantastic, right? And I can ask the same thing of Fury. Fury. Fury, great. Great, good girl. She's trying to get the microphone. Good girl. All right, so there you have it, right? If you are busy, if you have something to do, if you need to take a phone call or you know, you're gonna go cook a holiday meal or you're gonna, I mean, I don't know, go watch your favorite TV show and you don't want to have to have eyes on your dog or deal with your dog in that moment for a little while, put them in a crate. Like this is a, very, very powerful tool and not very many people really understand how to use it. People feel guilty or, or whatever their hang up is over it. I'm not, I'm really not totally sure um, why they've not gained more popularity with, with the breed because I think a lot of people, at least what I've been seeing recently, is that the trend right now is that crating is cruel, crating, crating is mean. And um, we gotta get over that. We gotta get over that. If you have a Belgian Malinois and you don't wanna crate that Malinois, oof, I'm not the channel for you and good luck. So now I wanna show you something with Riot. Um, and this is just, you know, he's a dog who's allowed into the kitchen. This is, the kitchen is a very um, common, I think, 
place where people don't want their dogs, but I actually don't mind it. This is not a threshold or a boundary that I've created for my dogs, which means it's a perfect opportunity for me to show you how to create one. So um, this will be completely brand new to Riot because he is 100% allowed to just come into my kitchen and walk in here freely whenever he pleases. So I'm gonna kind of lower the camera down here to his level and see if I can give you an idea of how you can start to work on creating boundaries, creating thresholds um, in your home into different spaces where maybe you don't want your dog to just freely be welcome into. Look at that. Look how easy that is. That required barely anything on my part. Just gave him a little verbal cue and a little body language, pushed into him a little bit to let him know he's not supposed to come through here. He's not welcome to be here right now, right? That's all it is. It's really that simple, folks. If you don't want your dog to cross a boundary, turn around, tell him no. Tell them, no, you're not welcome here. And then literally just follow through. Don't allow them in here. If, if he was to walk back in my direction, I would just block him, right? I would block him, tell him no, right? I would just push him away, give him a little spatial pressure and give him a cue with my body language and tell him no, um, or whatever your command is, that he's not welcome past this threshold. So I feel like, um, dog training is actually way more simple than people would like to, to make it seem. So a lot of training and communicating with your dog is just making your mind up about something, a behavior that you want or expect, communicating that to your dog in a clear way, both verbally and physically if it requires it, and then following through, just follow through. Just say what you mean and mean what you say. Communicate that to your dog. And you should have very little problem creating a level of communication and a relationship with your dog who clearly understands that. So you saw with Riot who, I mean, he knows, he knows what I meant. I, don't, I didn't have to work with him, he's not a puppy. You might have to put a little bit more work into that when it comes to your body language and your verbal cues and those things. But this is a dog who knows, right? And that's the goal, that's what you want, right? You want a dog who you can turn around to in a completely new situation. I just decided just now today, just now today, with big news to him, right? He doesn't get to come in the kitchen. He's like, all right, guess I'm not allowed in there because he knows that no matter what, I'm gonna follow through. If I turn around and tell him no or ah uh, uh, or give him some kind of clue, I don't want him in a, in a space, then he respects that because that's the language that we've created in the home. And that's what you need to be working on as well. Another thing that's going to lead to your success inside the home with your Malinois is um, routine. Just routine is really, really important for a dog. Painting a picture for your dog that your dog can expect, that he knows what's expected of him over and over and over in routine and practice, that's really, really important. So when it comes to letting my dogs outside, um, and I did a little bit of this in my last video, I showed you guys what that looks like. Um, my dogs know what to expect when they come to the front door to go out for a potty break. And that's because we've practiced this and this is our routine for going outside. So this is what a potty break, are you gonna come? Come on. So this is what a potty break looks like for us. Um, I have Riot here and I'm just gonna ask him for a sit. Sit, thank you. Um, and then he and I both know that I can open this door and he's not gonna move, which is super, super important because you don't ever know what's gonna be on the other side of that door. You do not want a dog that thinks that it's okay to just explode out the front door. We do live on a street where cars drive by. Um, we have delivery drivers that come up who probably would not appreciate a Malinois running out to them no matter how friendly they are. Um, you know, there's all kinds of scenarios that, that just for safety reasons alone, you should not have a dog who explodes out the front door. So I've asked him for his sit and then I can open the door and make sure that, you know, the coast is clear, so to speak. And then I will release him to come out when I'm good and ready. Sit.
Oh, wait. Okay. <laughs> Sorry about that. How's it going? Good. Good. I, I don't know if you, you remember us. Um, we chatted with you guys like... No All right. Thank you. Have a great day. So I literally could not have timed that any better because um, what you heard on my microphone is that as soon as I stepped out a few steps, there was actually a delivery driver uh, walking up to the, to the front path. And he saw Riot, and Riot saw him. I haven't reviewed the footage yet. I don't know if there will be a little change in his body language there um, or not. But basically, that is why impulse control is so, so, so important. I don't think that that delivery driver, no matter how much he may be a dog lover or, or whatever, would appreciate a Malinois running out the fucking door towards him. So um, that impulse control, that patience here at the threshold, that's why that's so important. And it's something that you have an opportunity to practice many, many, many times throughout the day because how many times are you taking your dog potty? How many times are you interacting with this front door every fucking day? Every day you have an opportunity to practice this. So this should be super, super solid. You have multiple opportunities to practice this every single day. You've got to take advantage of it. It's super, super important. It's just for the safety of your dog, if nothing else. So here is another place where you have a great opportunity to teach your dog a very valuable skill where safety comes into play. Just like I don't want my dogs to rush out the threshold of the front door, I also don't want them to rush out the kennel door. So just because I open the door to this kennel does not mean that it is an invitation for my dog to burst out or explode out of their kennel. And again, if you're utilizing a crate, this is something that you can be practicing every time you take your puppy or your dog in and out of their crate. Now Storm is still a puppy, and this is still something that I work on her uh, with from time to time. For the most part, she's pretty good. I'd say she's about 80% there. Every once in a while though, she's really excited. I'm here outside the kennel talking. She's probably pretty excited, maybe getting a little more amped. And I actually hope that she messes up so that I can show you guys how to correct for that because it's actually very, very simple. So um, typically I would be working with a treat in my hand. I don't have one right now, but um, I'm just gonna kind of show you for the sake of the example. All right, so let's see if she stays put or not, or let's see if she tries to come out and I'll show you what you should do. Ah. So I'm out here, she's excited to come out. I've been out here talking, so she's a little more excited than usual. So she did try to walk out and all I did was just shut the crate door. Nope, she tried to poke her head out again. So I'm just shutting the door and waiting. Nope, she can't come out until I tell her, until I give her the command, which my release command is Y-E-S. Yes, good girl, good girl. Oh my goodness gracious. Oh my goodness gracious, you almost knocked me down on the YouTube. All right, so now let's talk about another thing that can make coexisting with your Malinois inside the home much more enjoyable, and that is food refusal. So I have something that Riot really, really enjoys. These actually smell amazing, and uh, he's actually drooling right now just at the thought of me having one here in my hand that he might get a bite of. But if I was to drop this chip on the, on the floor, for example, I know that he's not gonna go for it. He might look at it, right? He might drool over it, but he's not going to touch it. So I can pick it up. You're like, oops, I dropped my chip, no worries. So you might be thinking, why is that important? So I am a mother of four and my kids absolutely come out here with food. Um, and you know, I had a toddler at one point, she was young when I brought Riot home. And this is something that we had to work on right away because what I discovered was if I gave her any kind of snack or anything to walk around the house with, my Malinois would just assault her for it. You know, he, was, he would just literally take it out of her hand. And that is, that is not okay. So we had to overcome that right away. And then that is just something that stuck with me. And I remembered to be sure that I worked into all of my puppies and instilled in all of my dogs. I don't want them thinking that just because I might set this bag of chips here um, down, right, and then walk away to go get something, 
that does not mean that it's an open invitation for him to get into my chips, right? Like these don't belong to him, these belong to me. So uh, food refusal is actually something that you should be working on as well. Now, rather than get into an entire video on food refusal, because I could literally make an entire video about that, I'm gonna go ahead and direct you over to Robert Cabral because uh, he is a trainer that I really respect a lot. And he has a lot of really great videos on his website, robertcabral.com. If you use code MALLIGATORMOM, you can actually get a little discount there when you check out. But he just released a completely free full length video on food refusal, like just this week. So rather than do the same video he just did, I'm just gonna direct you there. So if you wanna learn and understand more about how to teach your Malinois food refusal, which is super, super important, then head over to that video. In fact, I'll try to um, remember to link it in the description or, or try to remember to put it up here in the corner so that you can go give that a watch. All right, so let's recap. What did we talk about today? What are some things that are going to contribute to your dog being well-behaved inside the home? Number one was genetic fulfillment. Make sure that you are offering your dog genetically fulfilling activities and exercises throughout the day. Number two was use a crate. Use a crate, take advantage of the crate inside the home and create your dog, crate train your dog. And number three, I just gave some examples really quickly today of different areas where impulse control comes into play. Now, again, I can't stress enough. If you have a dog that you are trying to um, you know, compete with or teach personal protection to, or you've got some goals for this dog, most people do with their Malinois, you've got to be really careful to find some balance there between that impulse control inside the home and not tanking their drive or killing their drive. So um, again, that just depends on your dog, your dog's level of drive and what you require inside the home. But you got to try really hard to find a nice balance and understand as well that, you know, not every dog is the same. So all three of my dogs are treated differently. Storm spends more time in her crate than the other two dogs, for example. Um, Storm also is allowed to get away with a little bit more because I kind of experimented with her a little bit as a puppy and I didn't teach a, a lot of obedience up front. I let her be a little bit more reckless and a little bit more explosive as a puppy as an effort to not really tank her drive much as a puppy because I made that mistake I felt like with my first Malinois. So again, it's all about finding a nice balance. I wish you guys the best of luck. Thank you so much for watching. As always, I hope that you will subscribe to the channel, uh, ring the bell for notifications because I post a video every single Saturday. And don't forget, the weather is getting cooler and my hoodies are available. I'm wearing one now, but they also come in German Shepherd and Dutch Shepherd. They don't have to say gals with mouths. You can get just the poly. I've got a lot of other designs. And um, if you're interested, check them out, malligatormom.com. Anyway, have a great weekend, you guys. I'll see you next week.